I've opened up exercise3.html, which you'll find in the Chapter 8 jQuery effects folder. Our goal here is to learn how to call a function after an animated effect has taken place. You can see that we already have a document ready function in this file. And on line 50, we're changing the cursor to a pointer for this box header div. And directly below that, you have a response to the click of the box header. So this div here is our outer div, and that's the tips for eating out is our header div, and we have some content below that. So we'll be placing some more jQuery code inside of our function in order to animate the collapsing and expanding of that div. So let's take a look at uh, those divs now. We scroll down towards the bottom, you'll see there's an outer div called box, inside of which is the header div that we're responding to the click of, and the box content div, which will expand and collapse. So there's the outer div, the header, and the box content, which actually contains those tips for eating out. So that's what will collapse and expand. Let's go back up to our jQuery now, and we'll write the body of this function, which responds to the click of the box header that we were just looking at. So we're going to use some jQuery to acquire that part of the DOM or the document object model that we're trying to manipulate. So there's our jQuery method and the tag that we're looking for or the selector is going to be the box content which is a div. So we get div and there's some of our divs inside the document. The one we're interested in is the box content. Now at this point we want to invoke a method of the jQuery object now that we've acquired that part of the document we want. And this is called the slide toggle method. So we're going to pass to it the speed at which we want to toggle this div uh, collapse and in, in its expanded state. And so we're going to choose a slow speed for that. Now at this point, we want something to happen after that slide toggle animation is complete. So we could either write a function here, or we could simply reference the name of a function. So we're going to call an existing function. So I'm going to go ahead and type the name of that function in there. And you notice I'm just closing the parenthesis. I'm not really calling the function. On line 55, you can see the function all done. It acquires a div called all done message and sets the CSS property of visibility to a value of visible. So let's locate the all done message div. You'll find it down here at the bottom of the document. There's the div we're looking for, and it consists of a paragraph which simply says all done. So if we take a look at how that's styled right now, by heading up to the CSS block, you can see a reference to the all done message. Among other properties, the important one here is that its visibility property is set to hidden, which means we won't see this div when we launch the web page. In addition, we won't see the all done paragraph because it sits inside of that div. Let's head back up to our code now, and let's take a look at what we've done. We're going to set the visibility property from hidden to visible. So we're basically swapping it from its initial state of hidden to its new state of visible. And this happens here by the reference to the function, which it looks like there's a typo here. It's not add done, it's all done. That's the name of the function that we want to call after our slide toggle takes place. So we've already set the animation up. It's going to happen at a speed of slow. And now what we've done is added to the fact that when it's done, all done runs. So let's go ahead and try that. There's the animation, and there's the appearance of the div that was initially hidden because its CSS visibility property was set to hidden, and it's now being set to visible by way of the function call that takes place after our slide toggle. Of course, if we toggle it back, we don't have any code there to now swap it back to hidden. But I think you know enough about jQuery right now, so I think I'll leave you to write that function on your own to hide that div when we go ahead and call that function again or we toggle the effect, the animated effect of the box content div. So as you perhaps saw when we were typing that code, there's a lot of other arguments you can pass to these functions. Our goal in this lesson was to pass the argument which was a function that you wanted to execute after your animation took place.